the slowness of your steps, the wideness of your hips, the crookedness of your eyebrows, the redness of your cherry lips, and the numbness of your rasika heart be manifest in my meditation. O Shri Radhi, may the softness of your body, of your golden body, the sweetness of your smile, the whiteness of your eyes, the volume of your breasts, the thinness of your waist, the slowness of your steps, the whiteness of your hips, the crookedness. Kannst du uns gut hören, Gopinat? Nichts? Nothing? Oh. Radhe. Nee, er braucht ja auch ein Weg. Now it is better. Oh, Shri Radhe. Gopinath, kannst du jetzt besser hören oder Taron, könnt ihr noch mal sagen? Good sound. Also here, here the sound is wonderful. Okay. Shri Radhe. May the softness of your golden body, the sweetness of your smile, the wideness of your eyes, the volume of your breasts, the thinness of your waist, the slowness of your steps, the wideness of your hips, the crookedness of your eyebrows, the redness of your cherry lips, and the numbness of your rasika heart be manifest in my meditation. So the, the commentary is entitled Sri Radha's Ten Kinds of Sweetness. Of the five kinds of meditation, Dhyan is one. Sri Jiva Goswami writes in his Kram Sandarbha, Dhyan means specific meditation on a particular form and so on. How sweet, tender, and effulgent is Sri Radhika's golden body. Tenderness is one of the physical qualities. Sweetness 
So in this verse, we can focus and try to Im imagine the sweet form of our Swamini Radhi. It is a manifestation of all of her beautiful qualities that are shining through her effulgent body. And it starts that she has a golden and sweet body. Sweetness of her smile, but exactly the word is go range mradima smiti madurima netranchale dragima. So the golden body is go range, or she is also go rangi. We were reading this verse also this morning just for getting into the mood of the meditation, and we thought that. Gorangi is so sweet and golden. And that golden color of Shimati Radhika's beautiful, beautiful body is so generous. And it's so full of love that this golden color is gushing from every pore of her body of her transcendental spiritual being. Golden, it is the golden color of the molten heart because she is this golden love that even Mohan cannot understand, cannot grasp because in her own heart and body, there is no limitation as to make all Mohan's senses completely satisfied and crazy also. And to taste that, he became Gauranga. He wanted to feel Gaurangi, that beautiful golden heart. And not only the heart, it is not only one limb. It is all of her limbs are like her heart, golden and soft and melting, full of compassion, but also full of sweetness. This golden color is not any color that will blind the eyes, like sometimes the sun is also golden, but the sun can be harsh. The sun can be burning, but the effulgence of Srimati Radhika's body is golden and cooling, softness, sweetness is coming from that. That is the difference between the material sunshine and the cold body of Srimati Radhika's body. It is more beautiful, more nourishing and more compassionate than even the golden sunshine. The rays of the sun are so beautiful, but sometimes it can be too heavy. We have to get out of the sun. But Shimati Radhika's golden body and her effulgence, they are so, you know, so attractive that all, all mantras always want to be close to her, like her shadow. They are being nourished in the golden compassion of her effulgence. The softness of your golden body and the sweetness of your smile. It is sweet gold, sweet effulgence. It is sweet because it is full of well-wishing energy. It is unlimited sweetness that is coming through all of her body, through all of her senses, and through all of her existence. And this verse is only about that sweetness, about describing the beauty of her sweetness, 
that is already, as we have heard many times, indescribable. But still, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati Thakur, in his Swarup Avesh, in his absorption of Srimati Radhika's maid servanthood, he is dripping some of the drops of his mercy by trying to bring us also into that golden effulgence, into that golden shining light of Srimati Radhika's being of her service and her smile. Maybe somebody else would like to share on this for a while. Suniti Didi. Rade? Rade? Um, would you mind reading the verse again? Because we were a little bit... Uh, uh, in seva distraction. Okay. Thank you. Oh, May the softness of your golden body, the sweetness of your smile, the wideness of your eyes, the volume of your breasts, the thinness of your waist, the slowness of your steps, the wideness of your hips, the crookedness of your eyebrows, the redness of your cherry lips, and the numbness of your rasika heart be manifest in my meditation. If, if I can say something. Please. I was just feeling like um, why we meditate on Swamini's, all her qualities, her nature, her looks, her body, is to become more closer and intimate with her, right? Yes. So if, if we imagine like if we are in love with someone, then we observe everything of that person, right? We observe how he or she is walking, talking, smiling, how the hands are moving, how the eyes are looking, and that creates even much more joy in our hearts. So similarly, I was thinking, Gurudev, why, why we have to meditate on all her qualities and nature? What's the benefit of that, Gurudev? Because our mind now only can meditate on her. That is Manjali house. When we meditate in my Swami and the beauty of her, That that way we meditate, we have no way. Where I love, I meditate. I cannot meditate other place. Where I love, I meditate only that. I remember the name, I remember the form and the beauty of that. This is the natural behavior of the living soul. And when we are in Sarup, we are already fixed. We are when, uh, without a word we, we do. Without effort, we no need to afford for that. Yes, it comes naturally, right? When we are in love, naturally, the beloved is always with us in the heart and the mind, 
in sleep and dreaming and day and night. Tady Dany. Tady Odavači. I think uh, the most important part of the verse <coughs> is the very last part. That these things become manifest in my meditation. Because what means manifest in my meditation? These are all described physical qualities, qualities we can see with the eyes, with the senses. But when they're manifest in my meditation, that means they become spiritualized. They become spirit. When I'm seeing these in my med med uh, meditation, it means they, that I'm seeing them from my svarup. So the prayer is really that I can find my way to my svarup so that I can observe these things not as physical material, but as spiritual. Madame. Yes, dhyan means specific meditation on a particular form. Visheshato rupadi chintanam dhyanam. And actually, as we have listened many times, it starts with smaranam. We are listening and we are remembering. But dhyan, that is already some kind of advanced closeness in dhyan by meditation the form will manifest inside so i thought this verse is so special because this is a full mercy for dhyan meditation good if and i understand that this dhyan meditation is already quite um advanced meditation because it's already that you are in smaran nishta or can we say a fixed kind of smaran on the forms on the you know all the beautiful qualities of swamini it's not only a general meditation like yes you are saving me yes you are helping me yes i'm suffering get me out of here but i am worshiping your form I am worshipping, I want to serve each of your limbs. It's more about you. It's not about me so much anymore. So Narottam Das Pratna, you see, Goranga Bulite Have Pulaka Sari. Means when Goranga, then this meditation comes, Gorangi meditation. Then his body is shaking. He shakes. Oh, this Goranga is my Gorangi. And Hari Hari Bodhite man were me. And not only Gorangi is there, Hari is also there. Two sword in one body, Hari Hari Bodhite Nairvare. So these two lines means is the meditation looking to Swamini and Hari also. Hari Hari Bodhite Nairvare. So this is calm guy too. All her senses, all her qualities are attracting him. Everything is come back. That's the beauty. And come back three minutes, 24 hours, 12 and 12, and half is 
I also like what Chiva Goswami is writing as uh, when you were reading the first, I think in the first paragraph you quoted Chiva Goswami, right? Yes, Baba does. Mm -hmm. So here you said, like you said, Suniti, it's not, uh, we are going now from a general meditation much more into, a, like Chiba Goswami is saying, specific medif meditation, <laughs> in a specific meditation, <coughs> which requires which requires also what Uddhava was saying, we cannot, we cannot go into this area or we cannot enter that stage without knowing who we really are. So, so the specific, the specific uh, meditation requires two things. One, the specific Ishtadev and one, the specific me. So who am I? What do I meditate myself about? So it is both. It is a specific form of Ishtadev means Swamini and a Maista Ibav as a Manjari. So this uh, what is called Chiba Goswami is saying specific in a specific relationship is very important. And that is why Guru Dev is giving Diksha Mantras because all that relationship, all that what is necessary to realize Ishtadev is there when Guru Dev is speaking the Diksha Mantras into your right ear. So it requires both. It requires a specific initiative and your specific form, your specific style path. Yes. Age, form, elegance, Beauty, pleasantness, sweetness, and tenderness are the physical qualities. Tenderness is also one of the physical qualities of Swamini. How sweet, tender, and effulgence is Shrimati Golden Body. <laughs> Mardava means that one cannot even tolerate the touch of something soft. In Ujvalani Lamani, Shilarupa Goswami gives a beautiful example of the extraordinary tenderness of Sri Radhika's golden body. Sri Rupa Manjari told Sri Rati Manjari, Oh friend, last night Sri Radhika lay on a nice bed of fresh jasmine flowers. But the astonishing thing is that although the flowers have not withered even slightly, her tender body has become bruised by their touch. So this tenderness is even more tender than the sweetest tenderness of any jasmine, flower, bud or any rose petal. Swamani is so tender that even though her divine body is lying on a bed of rose petals or jasmine flowers. It's like the body is
blessing these flowers by not even smashing them, but they get enlivened. Swamini's transcendental divine body is so soft, so tender, and so full of love that even all the flowers that are used in her service, be it when she's lying on the bed of flowers, be it when she is walking in the forest and she is touching the flowers with her lotus feet, all the flowers start to bloom immediately by being touched by Swamini's love, by her, any of her limbs, by any contact with her. So how much can I as an aspiring Manjari also develop this tenderness? How can I be also full of fragrant softness and um, give up all my, any harshness that is in my heart, in my being? I want to be the shadow of Swamini. I want to be in her footsteps, in her anugatya, in the Manjari's anugatya, in Rupa Manjari's, in Rati Manjari's service. I think this is also, for myself, a very sweet meditation, this tenderness of Swamini, how it is permeating her whole body, her whole existence, her whole being is that tenderness. And that is also for me, in my meditation, that tenderness is shining through her golden uh, rays of love that are coming from her body. Suniti, I like this very, very much. Beautiful, thank you. That we should develop this tenderness also in our own life in our own form either here in this material world or in our meditation so for me it is also this tenderness what i was thinking now for me this tenderness equals also her unlimited compassion so she's so tender she gives even the flowers like you beautifully said the flowers she's reviving so our prayer like what is a radha rasa sudanidi what is that that is the ocean the ocean of compassion. So every day we should pray to the ocean of compassion that she should shower her compassion towards us. So this is at least my prayer every day. I Please be compassionate. And we know that she is the ocean of compassion. And if she, her body is so tender that even the flowers are not withering away, so we can imagine how tender her heart is. And so it is said that she is actually the embodiment of compassion and so we should also like you wonderfully said therefore i'm talking right now that we should uh, take this and and do it in our life like gurudev is doing it sadhu Maharaj is doing it every day be compassionate be nice be friendly be helpful so all these things i'm i'm not natural able to do this should be there because this tenderness otherwise there is no tenderness and no bhakti will grow. So if we are, like you said, if we are harsh towards ourselves and to our living entities around us, it will be very, very difficult to become a shadow of Swamini. So we should develop this attitude too. And this is only possible by her kripa, which is flowing to us, to the lotus feet of Gurudev. If, if I could just add something small to what Tarun beautifully described. This, this tenderness, I was often thinking that how soft Swamini is and how hard is my heart. Like, how can she enter my heart if I'm so closed? So the softness is so much required for her really to, to enter our heart, right? And then I was also thinking, Gurudev, our Gurudev is a Dasi of Radharani, so means he has also covered himself with the same softness and tenderness and mood. And often we disciples who are so hard, me including, give so much pain then to our Gurudev. 
So I was just feeling Guru Dev, how much pain then also she feels if we are not getting softer, so that she really can fully take over. Why does it take so much time, Guru Dev, to become soft? Shravan and Kirtan can make us what I will listen, I will make. I will I will imagine that. And basic thing is imagination, what is coming in thinking and meditation. Basic thing. Then I I am there, but even my mind. My mind is there, my body is there, my senses become active. So we have to listen always what we want in our life to be become softer. Mm. I get some. And this is also fortunate. When fortune rise, then circumstances up. If you go to Europe and America and you want the chances, it is very By chance, we are in Vrindavan, so this is my fortune that we can get association and Sangha of Rasikavaj. They can share, they can bring us to the deep. Up to feelings. Many are bringing us up to philosophy, theory, and philosophy. But real person, real soul, bring us to the feelings. feelings. Prabhupada said, this fortune is only possible in Vrindavan. Not out, outside of Vrindavan. We are lucky that we see accept Guru Krapa. Happened that Guru Dev show me the path of Raghavati, and we are trying to be lovingly behavior developed in our life. We should do. Guru Dev, Guru Manjarito. Oh, 
our friend. Last night, she radica lay on a nice bed of fresh jasmine flowers. But the astonishing thing is that although the flowers have not withered even slightly, her tender body has become bruised by her touch, by their touch. Ah, how sweet is Sri Radhika's slight smile. The budding smile on her cherry lips enchant, even enchanting Mohan. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami writes, Sri Radhika's nose is like Cupid's quiver filled with arrows of sesame flowers. When her lowered face smiles, the hunter Cupid shoots his arrows from this quiver to pierce the deer of Hari's mind. This moon-like smile brightens up the darkness of Mohan's desperate heart. This is a very, very poetic and expert uh, description of Shimati Radhika's face that is lowered a little bit. And maybe also we can see that her veil is almost touching the nose, going just slightly above the uh, nose. And through that, her eyes are looking at Mohan and the nose is like a quiver, like it has that capacity to completely shoot with her sidelong glances and the nose without, you know, looking at Mohan with that intense Madanakya Mahabhav. She is shooting him and he is falling. Niti, this is Pushpa Banaya, no? Right. Pushpa Banaya and our Kama Gayatri again. That is the Kama Gayatri meditation. Yes, go on, Gopinath. No, I want to hear from you. <laughs> Goravani has more to say about that. <laughs> I'm still <sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I, I cannot get away from this uh, in the beginning from Jana because uh, I, I was remembered that actually even in this world there is this uh, Let's closer to the mic, Goravani, please. I said I, I'm still stuck in Tian because when you meditate on the qualities of a person in the material world, maybe this has nothing to do with the uh, looking of the person. But in Radharani's case, every quality, every character of her is forming her body. So it's a very deep, intense meditation if we go in these qualities, even if we just go in this, I mean, just. 
in this uh, ten sweetness. If we go in one, it's already enough. My mind is kicked off. I just imagine what happens with Mohan if he is meditating on even one of these sweetnesses. So we have also this science that uh, the nose, the ears, every little aspect of our body has a deeper meaning of the character of a person. But it's not so deep, it's just, in comparison, it's just a little hint. But in Swamini's case, if we really go in these uh, characteristics, we will fall immediately in an ocean by only one little characteristic. And then we may get some feelings why her body is made like that, because it's a bath. It, she is Mahabhav. Mahabhav Rupini. So that means every detail of her body is Mahabhav, special kind Mahabhav. So I, I was actually stuck in that different thoughts and feelings. I cannot explain, actually. It's, I'm sorry, I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> and when feeling grow for some material all item what was attraction to my life it becomes shit <laughs> <laughs> Stinky and ugly. But the whole life we run for the thing. This is sent, sit, ugly, smelly, and stinky. The smelling is also good for the stinky. <laughs> so bad, Guru. It's totally bad. But we are crazy, <clears throat> we don't understand this. So we have to put the flavor of this beauty of Samani and live in this flavor and meditate. On the breast of Swamini, hmm? never is beautiful breast like her to any place in the world. And what do you say? This one? Waste. Waste. So thin and so beautiful that you cannot even imagine that it's possible. Everything is beautiful. Our lips, our eyes, eyebrow, our neck, our neighbor, our eye. I feel a finger of hand, not 
sad padang the luna ke. What is meaning of that? Sahas Koti Vishnu. Ananta. Ananta Koti Vishnu. Ananta Koti Vishnu. Number of Padma Jats. Jats. Explain what is his name. What do you mean? The presence of Vishnu. Bakunta. Vishnu, no, Vishnu. Bagunda, not what is. Vishnu. Millions of billions of Vishnu Lokas are not. Vishnu, specific Vishnu. Specific Vishnu mm. is not, cannot compare. For one layer of life. One a small side of Radhika Radharani's smallest fingers, nails, at these corners. What is the light or what shining? Beauty of the beauty of this uh, coming out. One nail beauty. So Vishnu himself cannot compare. Who is Anant Koti Brahman Naik? It is said by sages. All Aishwaryas are there, but this these are totally nothing. What is, what is that? After last month, what is song? Anant Koti Vishnu Log. After that, the last song, what you slowly singing? Makeshwari. Makeshwari creation. Makeshwari. Creation. All the creation is because of you, my dear. So this three. This three. Now explain. I, I say you. Makeshwari. All the what is Makeshwari? Creation is to understand all the because of you. Why? Question why? Because you want to expand yourself to give love to your lover. And your lover is all the creation. Yes, you are the creator of everything because of all creation happened because of you. <laughs> Actually, just now in the temple, like, just now in the temple, this Mataji was singing Arinam. She changed. She changed. And then she started this Radha Kripa Kata Just now. Right? Just now we are sharing here. Radha Mohan is listening, brother. He don't like anything else. <laughs> and Mahamantra is also this man. It's all Rishila Prati. Now they change to Mama. <laughs> because uh, there is no difference between Mahamantra and Radha Kripa. <laughs> there is no difference. It is not Krishna Mantra. Swami is at the past time of Radha. Hare. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
God in our day. I was yeah. just hanging in the word numbness of your Rasika heart. Numbness. So Radharani's heart is naturally so attracted to only one point that she's not even able. She's not even able to hear anything else, to feel anything else. It's completely numb if it's not her beloved. And it's such a beautiful prayer because it's coming in the end. May that numbness of your Rasika heart be manifest in because this is actually needed in our meditation that we are completely numb of anything else but the numbness of our Swamini Rasika heart. So we cannot hear or get anything else in this meditation. So it's a wonderful prayer. One thing I want to share, you inspire me to say, Namanes. Namanes is a beauty of devotion. If there is a heart is not enough, in numbness in the heart, there is no devotion. So her heart is always living in numbness. She is always in devotion, unconditioned. Right or not? That she is a teacher of devotion. She can teach whose heart will become numb. You see some Mahajan, go to see the heart of Mahajan, they are also very numb. Why? Because they are the kinkiri of some. Vinod Bhava, Anandas Bhavaji. I remember my Guru Dev. Prabhupada. Why is in old age he run away to the Western world without money, without numbness? The mercy of Radha Das. Second thing, and without numbness, there is no Sanadha. Today, God Chandra is telling. <laughs> God and Chandra are standing about to know the people how. Now it becomes clear to me. Without numbness, get in numbness. How will not come? And when there is a no feeling, how is not there? Till now the peace will not happen. We know only from sadhak they have physical body, this is the sloka, but not realization. It's if the heart is not. And heart comes when we become thinking to become Radha Das. 
We came to become, and she accepts us that you are okay, my person. Two things. We think is my raga, and she accept is her raga. That is raga and raga. Yes, good. If this numbness, it means also I am deaf. My ears are numb. My heart is numb. I cannot hear anything else that will relish my heart. Like last days, we were in full seva ras. We had so many things to do, running up and down and left and right. And but the heart was so numb that only in the evening, when we had very nice kirtan. It was some solace, some it giving shelter, and it was like coming home in the kirtan. Yes, we do save our ras. We we surf everywhere. We surf. We want to be that personification of love and action. But at the same time, there is some numbness. I feel good if that means that. When the holy names come, when Radhika's glorification come, then the bud is opening of my heart is opening in a different way. So that numbness is also some kind of protection. Sometimes I feel it's a protection for doing the services with love, with affection. But then, when the right moment comes and the right you know, sajatya sangha. Then the tears can start rolling, right? Then it can come to a melting of a heart, and then I can relax in the holy name, fully relax. That's why you also say, "Tam." Sometimes you say, "Good if I'm fully relaxed." <laughs> How fully, teacher. That. If we want to go to Mahabhav, we need some bhav, right? And this bhav is our And when the bhav is there, you know, prepare to do something, it is start happening something. Your body is start moving. You don't know why you are doing. But you start moving, that is devotion, right? Without thinking and planning, is automatic, is happening. What I imagine to do something. And all this together in one mallow. There are no different mallow. If there are ten people, all has hard enough. By looking to each other, their heart becomes. And when we see to Swami, my heart will not become numb. Because we not see. I cannot see her. I'm so blind, so I'm always keeping the picture to remind her what to do. I'm so blind. I'm so ignorant. Bless me, pray for me that I can change myself. If I am not so fortunate 
to see that sweet smile directly, then let me at least meditate on it. That is my desire. Because of that, I am taking the picture that I can meditate on. With me again this time. If I am not so fortunate to see that sweet smile directly, then let me at least meditate on it. That is my desire. Of all the limbs, that the eyes are the most beautiful. Swamini's wide eyes are even more unsteady or fickle than the wagtail birds. One of the 108 names Shiladaguna Das Goswami gives to Sri Radhika is Sobhanya Kajalankata Netra Nindita Kanjana. Her eyes that defeat the wagtail birds in unsteadiness are anointed with the eyeliner of good fortune. Viladagunat Das also says in Vilap Kushmanjan. Eyeliner, you are the eyeliner. Krishna. No, eyeliner is very long from the eyes. And it's, if you see the one point, this is the beauty of Aida. That one pointedness is our future. Her eyes that defeat the wagtail birds in unsteadiness are anointed. What is, why is this? Wagtail bird always backside is up and down, up and down. Flickering. Huh? Flickering. Flickering, yeah. And I, her eyes is also flickering. Hmm. Why? Watching every press Always sitting, always. Every press. She has only one thing to find it out. Where is my thing? And uh, Read more. Srila Raghunathas also says in Vilap Kushmanjali 42, even the slightest movement of your wide eyes that defeat the wagtail birds tightly binds up the Krishna elephant. This bind of the eyes because she is Mahabharata. Mm -hmm. 
We are when? so fortunate we got this book. Yes. It's a poem. It's a poetry. Never happened and never it will happen. It's a mercy to us that it happened in our lifetime. I'm so busy. Go on. Be so fortunate oh. to fully worship these eyes by anointing them with eyeliner. I remember, Gurudev, once you were explaining these decorations of the face of Swamini. And you mentioned that we have to be very close to decorate her and to, like now this is explained, the eyeliner. When will I be so fortunate to put this eyeliner? I have to be very close. I have to be practically eye to eye with Swamini. Wow. <clears throat> and the decoration, Singar, is Krishna. Mm. And Raksha is Radhika. Singar is Krishna, what is decoration? Manjari, only Manjaris are close and Krishna is close. All the decoration is Singar and is Krishna. Why black eyeliner? Because Krishna is black. It's so beautiful when they when they visit and they I talk to and they say why you make me black and then they say that is white black because we want to see on him and her eyes was blue why blue because she is white wow and sorry this. We are very fortunate. We born in this time where the Baba is right this too. Guruji said, Manjari's seva is to ornament Swamini and Mohan's seva is to spoil the <laughs> Wow, this is spoiling to do again service to the Manjari. This is our good luck. <laughs> when Krishna will not be spoiled and Manjari Seva is stopped now. So she is, uh, Manjaris are waiting when it will be spoiled by Krishna. <laughs> then again I will get the chance. Also because in this way means that there is the meeting, but if it's not spoiled means there is no meeting. So when this will happen, when the garland breaks, then Manjri can make a new garland. Baruru, we cannot win with Krishna. He is Baruru. 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 Oh my God. I. What is the garden? Nicely tied girl. Uh, Krishna tried to hang the garnet even 
he failed many times he tried <laughs> she break from her high not was going to happen without my desire my eyes very tight paro rule you can kill the demons but you cannot do anything here go out my eyes are very strong to close strong it's not fair to do that past time what is not going to do to the baru <laughs> We cannot win. We can kill the demons, but not <laughs> my son. Me, Barudu. Without her desire, nothing happened in the world. She is Barudu. <laughs> this is the meaning of this. What she desire, does not do, because she is Barudu's father. He cannot do more than that. What she don't like. But, Vipad says, yeah. may the big breaths of Srimati Radhika be visible in my meditation. Meditate in the breath. You will forget. All will be stinky. Very tight. Very beautiful, unexpected beauty. And Manjari put in the nipples of Radhika. What? Kasturi. Kasturi. Is a black. This is the place for Krishna. And she put the kanchuri, means the blouse, that is a blue color. Because this is the place of Krishna. There is a two person can. Touch the breast. One is a manjari. She decorates the breast because she is a baby. Baby can touch the breast, and lover can touch the breast. Heart cannot do that. Is the offense. So Manjari decorates the breast of Radhika. What? Fish. What fish? Makara fish. Huh? Makara fish. Makara. What is the meaning? Fish cannot live without water. You cannot live without fish. <laughs> This is the first quality of it. One is trying to put the garland of Swamini. That moment, Manjur is fanning so strong that her blouse falls and he has to 
look, it's just the breath and the face again. So I'm just always increasing this, you know. I like very nice Radha Kun first time when Manjali bring the king sari for that and Kundalata and they promise that who will win they have to give kids. <laughs> She said yes. She unknowingly she not calculating. Then he started thinking how this I have to do first kiss. I never do this in the front of my friends. How I will do. But today I have to do it again. Beside it, because anyhow, the first has to kiss. So maybe Krishna will do the first kiss to me. Then I got it. But uh, why I will do first when I never do? And when Krishna will do the kiss, then why not? I will say, no, 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 but I will. I won. <laughs> but I can say, no, 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 no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so it's better to lose today. You see that Leela? She not put the water and she stopped her king, Manjari and king and gopis not to flash water in his eyes. He can see me better that I, my whole body, and he become more mad to see me. And he win. So he, she not fly the world. And win. And they are clapping, oh, Krishna. And Krishna comes, he is putting his desire, he says, no, no, no. But he goes, the strong guy. <laughs> then one place, one place in the outside, not in the villa. Sakir and Gopis was there, and outside Mandiri is sitting, Rati Then one devotee went to him, who, oh, what is the past time to this? Why you bring the thin clothes to us? I know this pastime is going to happen, so I think that Krishna will do. Why not Radhika and the gopis press the eyes? Because they press eyes to Radhika, that she will become tired and all this. So Krishna grew in. So it's all Majiri's nose and see. Not see, not lose the game. She still win because she don't want to do first. Things. For this, this has to happen. So she win. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. It come to me. I like this past time. Baba, I want to be always with Baba. His books, my God. Radhara Sudhanidi and Vilapu Sambhati. When I read, is a fresh book. 
from 80s I am reading in Bangla and now in English. Why English? I am, I like to read Bangla more sweet, but to, 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 to maintain my English that I can share some words. <laughs> because yeah. when I go in Bangla or Hindi, I will forget all English words. <laughs> For us, Lord, it's your mercy. But I can say you, my Gurudev, Sri Sri Radha Govindas Bhavaji Maharaj, and the mercy of Anandas Bhavaji. What he say is in this two books. Two books. Two books. Two books. What you want to read, but never leave this two book. So, Gauri Avaishnav, these are golden words. May the big breasts of Sri Radha be visible in my meditation. Jai Ho! The day will happen. Yes, go ahead. happen, my life will change. <laughs> my material desire will finish. Because I am not interested in any stinky place. Giridari has no problem in carrying the vast Govardhan hill on his little left finger. But as soon as his eyes fall on Sri Radhika's breasts, his hands begin to shiver and he perspires. The cow herders, the gopas, don't understand. They think that Giridhari is becoming tired of lifting the hill. And they try to help him to get it raised, to keep it raised. Only the sakis and manjaris know the greatness of these breasts. Others yeah. cannot understand. Yeah. Wow. Because also good, if I heard before that when Giridhari was lifting Govardhan Hill. This was the first time that he could have a free look on Srimati Radhika's full form in front of everyone even. And that's why he had to shake because he had never seen her so openly and freely. So he was very shaken by her beautiful dress. They are very not happy that their eyes are blinking. <laughs> they don't want to blink their eyes. Radhika not like that. Why creator make my eyes blink? And Krishna also not happy with eyes blinking. Yes, face and breast. For Radhika, face and this eyes. 
प्रसिद्ध वन एंड फॉर मंजरी राधिका इज इम्पॉर्टेंट That is all. He got his strength till seven days because of other one. Yeah, Sachi Baba said he could hold it. Say, he got his strength till seven days because of Radha Rani. He could be able to hold this Gordon Hill till last seven days. Uh, but but he was fortunate to get this chance as he was in front of him all together sakid and mandir is all were there but in this uh, jaydev goswami wrote this in this one line he explained also that why he could uh, hold still seven days continuously day and night it was also One matter was there that he wanted to save the Vrajvasis, but just Radha Rani. He was looking in the eyes of Radha Rani continuously, and from there he was getting this strength to hold this Gordon Hill last till seven days. So that this blinking was disturbing. As much my my mind said that the shivering also was happening just because this if. This blinking was happening, then this shivering was also coming at the same time. Sri Ram. Sri Pat says, "May the thinness." Of Radha's waist be visible in my meditations. Her waist is as thin as that of a lion, and can be held even with the fist. The loving maid servants. Have the best view of that thin waist that carries a heavy burden, the breasts, and topples a vast area, the buttocks also. When Radhika walks, the maid servants are afraid. That her waist will break because of this unproportional situation. So they hold her waist. Katau Mandima, let me meditate. On Radha's steps that are slower than even that of an elephant. Even Sri Mohan, who also walks as slow as an elephant, is enchanted by Sri Radhika's gait. A walk. I want to meditate. On Sri Radha's wide buttocks, Sri Lakshmi Das Kavidat writes: Aren't the words 
of the poet who says that Radha's buttocks are like the bank of the Yamuna true? Surely they are. Her braid is like the Yamuna and her sash of bells sing like the swans that swim in the Yamuna. If not, then why would Mohan's mind the best dancer or his mind's girlfriends, the dancing girls of his desires, always dance the rasa there without ever resting? So this is also very nice meditation about how the whole of Vrindavan is Srimati Radhika's body, the sand of the banks of the Yamuna and the Yamuna, they are all her divine body and they also mirror the quality of her beautiful braid because the Yamuna is dark and it's also not straight, it's very crooked. So her braid is also like this. It's dark and it's shiny and it's very uh, swinging. The flow is, is, is like a swing. I remember, good if once you said, if we cannot sit down and listen, Kata, if we are so restless, if we are so nervous, we need to meditate on Srimati Radhika's hips. I like that. It has helped me a lot. Because her hips are so strong, like you said, Varuru. They are so strong and they are so one-pointed. And like this also our mind can become strong and one-pointed by meditating on Shri Matiradika's hips and her, her thighs, her strength and her determination. Shri Radhika's Eyebrows are crooked and cast arrow-like glances on that enchant even Shyama Sundara, the transcendental youthful Cupid of Vrindavan. How many emotions she reveals with the trembling of her eyebrows. Pushpabanaya, right, Gopinu? Govinda Das is singing. Wherever the subtle trembling of her glances are manifest, there waves of emotions arise, like so many waves of the Yamuna. And Radhika's eyes are also as blue as the water of the Yamuna is. Sripad wants to meditate on these sweetly knitted eyebrows. Sri Radhika's lips are as sweet as red bimba cherries. And even Krishna is enchanted when he sees them. How could he be enchanted 
by them unless their red effulgence, luster, represents her passionate love for him. As red is the color of passion. Shripad desires to meditate on these ruddy lips. Finally, Shripad says, I also want to experience the numbness of Radha's heart. Loving Radhika is always numb out of ecstatic love for Mohan. Nothing of this will remain hidden for the sensitive maidservant. So good if the sensitivity of the maidservant makes it possible to feel the desire on Swamini's heart. Yeah. And to always assist her in that desires that that want to serve Mohan, but the, the maidservant is first of all ready to always fulfill Swamini's desires so that her heart can be satisfied or come Sunset. together with uh, No diversion mind. She is very sensitive. Always one pointed, she is uh, other mind is not good. Other place, no meaning for her. Is all not one pointedness makes sense. Sensitivity means the quick understanding, also. I think one is understands very quickly. In Svida Svarup, in his Svida Svarup, she yes. In his Siddha Swarup, Shri Pati's diet. Whole line. Read it. Whole line. This. Nothing of this. Or loving Radhika is always numb out of ecstatic love for Moha. And nothing of this will be remaining hidden for the sensitive maidservants. More. Let this numbness of your heart be manifest in my meditation. Sripad prays. And in his Siddha Svarup, Sripad yeah. desires this tenfold... Yes, Gurdjieff? Without Siddha Sarup, we are not sensitive. <laughs> we imagine, but Siddha Sarup, we are sensitive. And then nothing remains hidden. Why Siddha Sarup not? 
Transcendentness coming down to the soul. That what is the mental transcendence of the spirit? Connection. Yes. Mental transcendence. The ladies conceive the baby. And we conceive our spiritual body mentally. When the mind is condensed and become very sensitive, when I develop mental conceive a spiritual body. And this happens when mentally my meditation becomes condensed. Like milk is condensed. The rati becomes condensed. Then Kama Devata. It's like mother teacher. Yeah, the husband and wife become condensed. The desires are very condensed, then they become. So that mental conceivement, that condensed, Rati has to come there. Only one pointed desire. It's again the Kama Yeah. <laughs> That has to be condensed. Because when milk becomes condensed, we can make many nice things. Only many sweets and the varieties of things. All sweet you can do. And you need to condense. And everything becomes natural. Okay, now comes to the end. Very nice, Leela, for relishing. One Sri Krata goes out to meet Mohan at noontime at the Diva Bizarre. With great passion, Radhika arrives at the meeting place, while Shripad follows her like a shadow. Anxious, Nayakamani, Mohan, the jewel of gallants, waits for her inside the grove. As soon as he hears the jingling, of her ankle bells, he comes running out and takes Swamini into the grove with the greatest care and respect. While he holds her, he feels the softness of her golden body. that becomes reddish or that became reddish because of the perking strong rain sun rays. It is moon, uh, uh, noontime. So Mohan seats Ishwari on a bed of flowers and fans her with soft leaves or wipes her off with his yellow dhoti. Through Shama Sundaran, the maidservant also relishes the softness of Shimati's golden body. Oh. Swamini 
smiled slightly. When she notices Mohan's great love for her. How wonderfully sweet is that smile. Mohan is enchanted and thinks, this is the greatest nectar. I have to drink this with the cups of my lips. Srimati then casts a glance at Shyam, which makes him experience the whiteness of her eyes. Full of desire, he places his hand on her breasts so that he experiences their plumpness. Swamini pretends to be a little offended, so she gets up from bed and walks away. In this way, Shyam sees the thinness of her waist, the slowness of her steps, and the wideness of her buttocks. He pulls at Swamini's dress to keep her inside the grove. But she beats him with the trembling of her knitted eyebrows. How wonderful is the beauty of these eyebrows. Mohan is enchanted and forcibly drinks the nectar of Swamini's lips. In this way, the maidservant relishes the redness of Swamini's lips through Mohan. Now the divine couple become overwhelmed by Cupid and they commands they continue their love games. Krishna tightly binds Swamini in the ropes of his embrace. Rasena means here with Mohan, who is flavor personified. While Mohan lovingly embraces Swamini, the maidservant experiences the numbness of her ecstatic heart. Suddenly, the vision disappears and Shripad humbly prays, O cloud bank of sweetness, O queen of the secret Nikunja, O limitedly sleep, Merciful Radhi, your golden body is a storehouse of rasa. When will I become conscious of that in my meditations? When will I become conscious of your tender body that shines with a golden luster? Conscious of your thin waist your white buttocks, your big jewel-like breasts that are the limit of sweetness. O oh, Mohan's beloved, will I see your sweet, luscious smile, your reddish, cherry-like lips, your crooked eyebrows, and your beautiful, slow steps that enchant even Madame Mohan? Sri Radhika's heart is filled with rasa and stunned with love like a jewel. Sripad Prabodananda says, When will I directly see 
the essence of the wealth of smara. Jai Jai Shri Ramadhi. Yes, Guru. Well, well from last line was. Sri Prabhupada Nanda says, when will I directly see that essence of the wealth of Smaran? The wealth of Smaran is Dhyan. So that is the essence of the wealth of Smaran. Of this, this past time. Yes, of this, because this is surprising, right, Gurudev? We're talking about the qualities step by step, and then comes the past time. Yeah. See, see. Uh -huh.